Hold up. Let's run the tape back so I can set the record straight. Picking up where we left off, here in Cusco. We had taken advantage of what the city had to offer, including a detour to Machu Picchu. And since we still didn't have a motorcycle, someone decided we should ditch our gear and take a tour of the Amazon. But somewhere along the way, I got the sneaking suspicion that someone I won't say who, <laughs> might have ulterior motives for dragging me into the middle of the jungle. But I reluctantly agreed, sure to sleep with one eye open and a dagger under my pillow, just in case. So after an expensive and serpentine trip to Machu Picchu, we set our sights on the end of the road and the small village of Intihuatana on the Madre de Dios River <coughs> and along the edge of what has been classified as the cultural zone, indicated here in brown, at the outskirts of the restricted zone, indicated in green. But getting there meant a full day in the van, including a couple pit stops, the first of which being Nina Marca, a collection of approximately 20 pre-Inca chulpas, or tombs, overlooking the Pucará Valley, dating back to the 13th and 14th centuries. Nina Marca, which translates to Fire Village in Quechua, sits just off the highway to Paucartambo, our lunch stop for the day, and the gateway to Manu. This remote mountain town is home to one of the largest Virgen del Carmen festivals in all of Peru, packing tens of thousands of revelers and spectators into this tiny plaza. But we'd gotten our fill of the days-long festivities in Cusco and continued pushing up the road to the park boundary and the end of the asphalt After a briefing from our guide, we started the long descent through the cloud forest and into the Amazon, capitalizing on the ample opportunities to explore our environment, whether it be a roadside waterfall or simply walking along the road, which was fine by us. The van was getting a bit claustrophobic and we found ourselves longing for the open spaces we'd become accustomed to on the bike. This little fella, with the funny head, and even funnier name, is the national bird of Peru. The Andean cock of the rock, also known as a tunki, is native to the Yungas of the Eastern Andes, where the mountains plunge into the Amazon basin.
We arrived in Pilcopata as the sun was setting over the Andes and made our way to the Paraiso Inn, situated on the banks of the river. That night after dinner, Chad invited me on a night hike on a faint trail behind the inn, in hopes, I suspect, that I'd be eaten by a jaguar. Instead, we ended up finding something completely unexpected. An old graveyard that was in the process of being consumed by the jungle. From what little was still visible, this appeared to be the final resting place for four to five families, with the most recent grave marker dating back to the early 80s. 1936 to 1980. Certainly a spooky, albeit intriguing find in the middle of the night. Good morning from Manu, somewhere in the Amazon. The next morning, we ascended high above the banks of the river toward the end of the road, stopping along the way at a local animal rescue where we were given strict instructions not to touch the animals. But apparently, the animals didn't get the memo. Especially this spider monkey. Hi. Hi. Wow, the puppy. Hi. Oh. How are you? <laughs> It's who not only welcomed Chad with a warm embrace, but decided to enlist him in his long-standing feud with this dog. He's grabbing his tail. Oh, hey! Oh, bur oh okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> What's he doing? Just chilling? Up yeah, there? he's doing your base. I'm base. So pesado ya le escuché que una rancha. Of the approximate 220 species of mammals that call Manu home, there are an estimated 15 different types of primates, 16 counting Chad, 8 varieties of wildcat, over 1,000 species of birds, and 1,300 different colors and shapes of butterfly. Not to mention all sorts of other creepy crawlies. I quite literally have a monkey on my back. I can feel its nuts on my neck. I don't know why this guy likes me so much, but ever since we got here, he hasn't left me alone. What's he doing? 
I hope they don't have fleas. If he's got fleas, I've got fleas. And despite the fact that neither Chad nor I have taken a keen interest in bird watching, our guide is an avid featherhead, which means that for the next few days, so are we. But as fun as this may be, it wasn't what we came here for. This was, after all, nothing more than a glorified petting zoo. After a day and a half, we still hadn't left the highway. And as we walked the final hour into Atalaya, Chad was starting to wonder if we were the victims of some sort of bait and switch. But much to our relief, we finally reached the end of the road, where we were outfitted with some fancy new footwear before making our way to the boats and setting sail, so to speak, on the beautiful Madre de Dios River. Departing port, we were finally, officially, in Manu. Or maybe not, depending on which map you're looking at. Either way, we stopped for lunch and some topless hijinks before continuing downriver to the jungle camp we would call home for the next few days. Over 95% of Manu's 17,000 square kilometers, 6,600 square miles, is off limits to the public, open only to researchers granted permission by the government. We're going to die. Yes. Or residents of the estimated two dozen indigenous communities within the restricted zone, some of which remain uncontacted to this day. boat not only serves to transport staff and guests, but as resupply for the lodge. And the lodge just so happens to be a kilometer from the landing. So while the fellas handled gear, food and drinking water, I did my best to manage hauling 100 rolls of toilet paper through the jungle which is certainly something I never expected to be able to add to my resume. Hey, so that's <laughs> Woo. What's up, toilet paper girl? <laughs> this is where the wheelbarrows stop. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wait, On foot from here. I don't think the wheelbarrow would have made it. Why job? Why job? Here you go, man. Oh, thank you. Woo. <laughs> hey, it's the plywood shack. The plywood. The plywood palace. Plywood palace. <laughs> I like it. Mosquito net and all. I think I want to see you drink the I drink the drink the drink. After acquainting ourselves with the Plywood Palace, we decided to take a quick tour of the lodge, where Chad's suspicions were confirmed. We got the ayahuasca bar, which is ill-advised. This was the Amazon Harpy Lodge, which, much like the previous night's accommodations in Pilcopata, 
is not what we had been sold. Which would explain why this looked nothing like the pictures. And then I don't know if this is a first aid kit or a religious shrine. We're gonna find out together. And it appears to be neither. <laughs> what are we out here? What is this? Uh, I don't know what this is. Bronchito flimitas. Okay, so we got some cough syrup here. Bronchito flimitas. What do you have? Rectal solution. Rectal solution. <laughs> Rectum. Yep. Via. It nearly killed him. Via rectal. Here we go. Via rectal. Rectal solution. Is that for like constipation? What is that? I'm not really sure. What What do we have here? Povo pero solution oral. Oh, we have oral, oral. and rectal solutions. Okay, but what's it for? So solutionating. I don't know what it's for. All right. What do we have here? We have... I don't know what any of this sh is. So if, if someone were to break a leg, do we get them the rectal solution? <laughs> And someone uh, gets bitten by a snake. After taking stock of the medical supplies and confirming that we had absolutely no idea where we were, we jumped back into the boat and continue downriver. This evening's activities included a float through the wetlands, a popular stomping or flapping grounds for the Hudson, a peculiar beast with a curious bloodline that happens to be quite plentiful throughout the Amazon, undoubtedly due to the fact that their meat tastes so foul. They're nicknamed stink birds. After our 10th bird watching session of the day, it was time to put our gum boots to the test with a good old fashioned bushwhack back to the boat. Stuck? You okay? No, I'm not gonna be able to go through that because my boot isn't that tall. <laughs> yeah, I was. Oh, oh man. Oh my god. Alright, Rosie, go around in the mud. Yeah, stick to higher ground. There you go. The jungle is so thick and overgrown in areas, it's impassable to humans. Small creek beds and waterways offer the path of least resistance, <laughs> but present challenges of their own. A machete and good pair of gum boots are the preferred fashion whilst traversing the Amazon. Okay. But do not guarantee success. What the hell? Why'd you let so much water get in your boot? 
Are your feet wet? Yeah. yeah. You both yours? Yeah. Oh, my feet are totally dry. Hold on, let me just empty this up there. <laughs> oh man. Damn. <laughs> you guys are gonna have some some rot foot, some swamp foot. Anyone attempting to venture beyond what few well-worn paths exist must truly pick their poison. Pack your way through the dense thicket where everything stabs, stings, bites, and burns, or wade through its parasitic waters. Back in the swamp? <laughs> yeah. Where some of the region's most feared predators lie in wait. Unbeknownst to Chad at the time, this giant ant. Oh, sh Rose, you've got one of those giant ants on you. Which was nearly the size of his pinky finger. Oh, my God. Is one of the most feared insects in the Amazon. Oh, there it is. I just knocked it on the ground. Look at it. The Paraponera clavata. It's bigger than my finger. Also known as the bullet ant is documented as having the most painful sting or bite of any insect in the world. Luckily, this was one bullet I was able to dodge. After over an hour of waiting and hacking our way through a canopy so thick that it obscures all daylight. You're the only one that survived. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Because I didn't want to have wet socks. We finally crawled out of the brush before a long, dark boat ride back to the lodge. Welcome to the Plywood Palace. Is Rosie in her muddy boots? Our next two days in Manu would largely be filled with more of the same. Bird watching, jungle hikes, a little George of the Jungle action, <laughs> and the official extreme sport of spring breakers the world over, zip lining a mainstay of any all-inclusive jungle tour. Yeah, okay, I'm out of here. See you. And while we could bore you with all that footage, I'm hey. guessing you get the gist. Oh, What's up, baby? Yeah, it's good. Good. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so we bid farewell to our plywood palace, carted our belongings to the boat, and back to Atalaya, or Intihuatana, depending on what map you're looking at. My bears. That's it. All right. All right, what are you doing? Okay, sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. I got you, I got you. From there, another long van ride back to Cusco. Luckily, Chad and I are accustomed to roughing it. So despite the fact that accommodations weren't exactly as advertised, they sure beat sleeping on the ground. And regardless of the somewhat excessive bird watching, mandatory zip lining, man-eating ants, claustrophobic jungle hikes, and the monkey that insisted on rubbing his nuts all over the back of Chad's head. Our trip to this remote corner of the Amazonian cloud forest was well worth the effort. After one final night on the town, we were reunited with our Africa twin. After a long, bikeless, albeit action-packed week, we were finally back on the road and on our way to this sacred valley, home to some of the most impressive Inca 
and pre-Inca ruins in all of Peru. And our next stop on our tour of this impressive country. I hope he doesn't have fleas.